The Colchester vase, the large bag-shaped colour-coated beaker, decorated with arena scenes in barbatine technique, with an incised inscription running below the rim. It stands 212 millimetres high, with a rim diameter of 158 millimetres. Apart from a crack at the rim and a few chips, mainly from the barbatine, it is in near perfect condition, one of the finest barbatine vessels from the northwest provinces. It was found out here. This bit is not yes. Yes, it was found in 1843 when part of the Western Cemetery was discovered. It contained cremated bones, which were recorded at the time, but what wasn't realized until Colchester Museum and Reading University did a joint project called Decoding the Dead uh, two or three years ago, that the cremated bones were actually still inside it. So this has enabled them to be examined using modern forensic techniques. It was covered with a small locally made mortarium and accompanied by a small locally made flagon standing in a Samian dish of form Dragondorf 36. The original drawing is rather nice by Josiah Parrish and they've arranged the pots for the photograph in exactly the same position as he drew them. Barbatine decoration is normally, I should say, that this is a collaboration between um, Lynn Davis, who's the curator of Colchester Museum, Nina Crummy, John Pierce, uh, and myself, plus two bone specialists, or rather Emily Carroll, who's a bone specialist, and uh, a group from Durham University who are, have studied the isotopes of the of the bones and this is one reason why I didn't want to record it and immediately circulate it because I'd asked their permission but not their permission to record it and circulate it before publication. This initial part is a combination of my contribution with Nina Crummies. Barbatine decoration is normally done by piping soft clay onto the surface of the pot but evidence on the vase shows that the main figures were made separately perhaps on a marble slab, and then lifted and applied to the pot. Indications of this are fissures where the motifs are bent to fit onto the pot. I think you should be able to see on the left-hand side, um, just below his chin, there is a break, a, a very fine break, where the, where the head has been bent to fit, fit onto the pot. And on the other side, just below the arm, there are signs of very fine clay looting, which is where clay is applied to the underside of an applique to ensure that it adheres to the surface of the pot. Horizontal borders of ovoid dots with some foliage at the base uh, define the seams on the pot. The seams start with a double row of vertical, vertical dots and there are three separate scenes, all e arena related. The first shows a Pygniarius. This is the figure on the left. He's armed with two sticks, uh, pretty minimally armed, and he has a, a rather basic lo loincloth and nothing else. His scene includes both him and a Bestiarius, who is wielding a whip. And between them, they are teasing a small bear. The Pygniarius has curly hair formed from pipe dots. And the Bestiarius has straight hair formed from pipe, individual pipe lines. The Pygniarius' loincloth is made from individual pipe lines. The Bestiarius has a tunic and trues with padded bindings of stripe of pipe lines shaped to fit his limbs, a manica to protect his left arm. This is a sort of heavy cloth uh, guard, which was used when Benatoris and, um, and uh, Bestiari were dealing with animals to protect them from bites. And he has what may be a stud 
or possibly Nina has suggested it's a symbol to distract the bear attached to his elbow. The lash of the whip is very finely drawn. If you can see, it curls down in front of the bear's face, down onto his neck. The bear has its legs formed of two lines, giving the effect of musculature. Dots for eyes, teeth, tail and claws, and neatly shaped ears. It's such a small bear that I wonder if in fact it's a young one and whether it's not so much a scene of actual activity in the amphitheatre as it's a bear being trained for such scenes. There is a similar scene and those of you who were on our trip to Trier and I think was it 2013? 2012 we visited the villa at Nenig which has the floor composed of hexagons with um, octagons with, with uh, arena scenes. And here is a very similar scene. Uh, here is the manica on the, uh, on the bestiarius's arm and they've both got whips and there's a bear and the bear has knocked someone over. This is the area from which in fact we think some of the Colchester potters may have originated the Trier Rhineland area. The transition between the second scene has the bestiarius. This shows the, you can't see my cursor again. Yeah. Um, this shows the uh, manica on his arm very clearly. Also shows the bindings on his legs. Shall I ask? No, okay. The second scene, um, is a secutor and a retiarius. I'll show you the complete scene in a moment. This is the best view of, of the secutor. And note the trident on the ground beneath his feet. This is a pair of fighters that seem to have been very popular on pottery and mosaic imagery. The secutor uh, is a, wears very basic plain armour so that the net carried by the retiarius can't catch on anything um, and while the retiarius carries the net as, as with his as appropriate for his name and a trident so he's often called the fisher. So this is this is the whole scene. Um, the retiarius has clearly been defeated He's raised his finger in, in, uh, as a sign of surrender. And as we've noted, his trident is on the floor. And in his left hand, he carries a little patch of squares, which is the remains of his net. And that is all there is. While the secutor is charging at him with his sword. Secutor has a shield, which appears to be an applied plaque added to the pot, with, uh, then with additional barbotine added to it. His usual very smooth helmet, which prevents any uh, catching from the from the net, with and it had also with this helmet he has very limited vision. A tunic with studs, and he has greaves. The retiarius has a heavy galerus to protect his neck and shoulder. Again, probably this the top part of this may be a, a plaque of applied plaque of clay bindings. And what Nina has suggested, maybe bells at his ankles um, to help guide the secutor around because his vision is so limited in that helmet. The, um, the actual net itself is an unusual appearance on, on a pot. It very rarely appears, but there is one on a Samian vessel, a Samian flask, a late one, from Reinsarben, which shows again a secutor with his shield and sword, um, and the retiarius with his net um, and his, uh, his trident. And then at the end of this, there's just the three figures around this, the body of this flask, there's someone playing the water organ. And although it seems quite incongruous, very often when you see image of a water organ in a context, it is actually in the arena. 
and presumably they were they pushed the organ out to entertain people during the intervals while they swept the bloody sand and dragged the bodies away. So that's just to remind you of the stump of the net in his left hand. The third scene is an animal hunt. Again, a common uh, activity in the arena. While the foliage is among the other scenes, here's the whole of it, um, there is more here. And in fact, we know that they very often planted trees, made little hills and, and did other things to create the atmosphere of, a, of an actual scene within an arena spectacle. So that's maybe what these are representing, shrubs and bushes set in the, in the arena. The animals are a hare above a hound and a pair of stags. The ears and upper legs are all done with double lines. The eyes are dots and the antlers are rather untidy single lines. Normally a, a stag with a splendid set of antlers like those two, their antlers would match on each side of their heads, but these are rather um, unmatched and rather slap happily done. Unusual for this chap who is such a very good decorator. But you can see how some of the little chips of the ends of the Barbatine decoration have, have been lost over the centuries. The tip of one of the hare's ears and, and his two front paws, for instance. The inscription round the rim has always been described by eminent persons such as Professor Jocelyn Toynbee and others onwards as having been cut after the vessel was fired. This is impossible um, and we, we all agreed on this, John Pierce who studied the inscription and, uh, and the rest of us, we all agreed when we looked at these photographs that the um, look at that writing isn't that beautiful it's been done with a with a very sharp stylus or similar tool while the uh, clay is hard but not absolutely fired hard solid and before the slip was fired if the slip had been fired you would get so much crackling and breakage round the uh, edge of the letters and it would be absolutely impossible to get the detail of say the M at the beginning of Mario at the top left, the M at the beginning of Memnon um, and these lovely uh, swanky I's and L's on the end of Valentinus and Legionis and the letters, the crossing um, X's of the 30. So we think that the, that the vessel was slipped and then the inscription was, was cut in afterwards. And the fact that the, the, the inscription has come out red is due to the firing conditions rather than, than to the fact that it's cut into a clay of a different color underneath. Go back to that one, I think. The most of the uh, inscription consists of the names of the protagonists shown around the top. Secundus will be the Pygniarius. Mario, the bestiarius, um, and John notes that Mario is not a British name and that he may well have come from somewhere in the Mediterranean. Memnon, the secutor, uh, is a name that occurs in the Trojan Wars and may have been chosen as a stage name. There are other parallels for this in, uh, in epigraphy. He has fought eight bouts it says Memnon Sac, which we think is probably a, a, a miswriting for a secutor rather than secutor. Eight or nine, it is actually. It's four strokes that he's fought nine bouts as a secutor. Whereas his opponent, the Retiarius Valentinus, hasn't got any bites to his credit at all. He may be a beginner, which may be why he's made such a mess of losing his net. The reference to the 30th Legion is intriguing um, and it is most likely uh, that it refers to the role of the Legion in the trapping and trading of animals. Um, the cities of the Rhineland had a lot 
or have a lot of evidence for arena activities. There are a lot of garrisons along the Rhine. Um, and the most interesting of all is the statue to the hunter god Sylvanus, dedicated by the Ursarius bear catcher of Legio 30 at their base at Xantum on the Rhine. Deo Silvano Cesorinius Amor Amorsius Ursarius Leg 30, uh, Ulpia Victrix Severus Alexander VSLM, which is, means um, faithfully and dutifully paid his vow. And it's a statue probably of the god himself with a bear hoovering up a pile of apples or buns. Generally enjoyed himself. A beaker in Veteral ware looks like Samian, but it is in fact Veteral ware, which is very fine ware, which appears a whole variety and range of forms and, and uh, types of decoration, painting and uh, red slippers here. It was made in the Veteral area, which is the area enclosed by the Limes, north of Frankfurt and Mainz. It also has pre-firing inscriptions on it. In this case, they're under the slip. But again, they give the names of the protagonists. Here is a Reti Arius standing on the, in the centre on a little scaffolding. Um, and we know from the text that the Reti Arius was often allowed to stand on a little ladder with a pile of stones by his feet, as he has, and hurl them at the secutores who were coming up ladders to attack him so that he could either bowl them over like throwing the stones around their feet or throw the stones at their bodies and knock them off that way. Here, in fact, he's not got secutores against him, but what looked like a pair of, of uh, pygniarii. But it is the most extraordinary pot. Just to the left on the screen of the uh, scaffolding is Ursus Tubiken, which is looks like a bear playing a little trumpet. Um, and there's, it's sort of curious as to whether this is actually a trained bear or whether it is an actor or possibly even a condemned criminal dressed up as a bear in a bear skin. Um, and again, we have the, the bestiarius with the whip behind him and an animal hunt at the bottom. So there are elements here which match some of the imagery on the Colchester vase. The vase was made in Colchester where many colour coat vessels have the similar purplish colour coats on red fabrics. This raises the question of the firing. Analysis shows that this ware was made in Colchester of London clay. Some years ago, the, the Fautores, the International Pottery Study Group, visited Colchester as part of their uh, stay in, uh, their congress in Oxford and London. And on display were moulds and bowls of the decorated Samian potters who worked in Colchester, Potter A, Potter B, and also Potter C. And my friend Ingeborg Zetcher, who's an expert on Trier Samian ware, took one look at Potter C and said he isn't Colchester, he comes from Zinsi. So Robin Simon set up a system of um, analysis by inductively coupled, coupled spectroscopy plasma spectroscopy, I knew I'd have to word that, uh, which showed that indeed the sync the bowls are potter C, but potters A and B, for whom moulds survive, uh, were actually working in Colchester. And they also examined, by the same techniques, some of the colour coat wares and some of the plain, um, plain saving wares with stamps which only appear at Colchester. So, analysis shows that this ware was made in Colchester of London clay, but a simple reduction firing is unlikely, as that would simply fire the pot grey or black. The red of the fabric and the purplish tone of the slip suggest that oxygen was let into the kiln in the final stages, but the dark slip does suggest a previous reduction phase. Perhaps like Greek red and black figure vases, there was a primary oxidation phase to file the pot to a high temperature and thus get the hardness which we're familiar with on this ware. 
then reduction to dark and the slip, then a final oxidation or partial oxidation by letting air into the kiln as the, as the um, kilns cool down to redden the colour of the slip and the areas which show through where the slip is, is thin and the fabric itself, which is why the inscription has come out red. This would have involved great skill, but in a city which has produced the only true Samian kiln in Britain, a kiln master at the top of his craft may be expected. The Colchester Samian stamps, identified by ICPS, show that some potters came from the Rhineland. The most important for the vase is Acceptus III. His die occurs, his die 1A occurs on Samian ware, um, on a beaker fragment of, of similar form to the, to the vase itself, and on a mortarium of the same type as the vase's lid. Acceptors three dates are circa 160 to 200. This would fit the mortarium, which is unstamped and so may date from the late second into the early third century, according to Kay Hartley. The Antonine Samian dish and the flagon, which is more widely dated from the Hadrianic period to the turn of the second and third centuries. This would give a date for the burial of the late second to early third century. The surviving bones studied by Emily Carroll represent the entire skeleton with an unusually high proportion of skull bones. The occupant of the vase was probably male and aged over 40. Periostitis of one femur may indicate acute inflammation due to strain or trauma. The skull showed signs of porosity and pitting, which may be an in indication of nutritional deficiency which seems rather strange in someone who could afford such a what was obviously an expensive pot as his burial urn. Other bones included in the vase were oyster shell and animal bone fragments, but none were sufficient to identify. Strontium isotope analysis by Joanna Moore, Geoffrey Newell and Janet Montgomery at Durham has shown that the individual has higher strontium isotope levels than would be usual in the Colchester area and could originate from a part of Britain with older rocks, such as the southwest coast, Cumbria, Wales or Scotland. Given the epigraphic evidence for incomers from elsewhere in the empire, other places that might fit would be northern Italy, northern Greece, Pannonia and Bavaria. So we are looking at someone who could have come from almost anywhere in the Roman Empire, um, which would fit with some of the inscriptional evidence which we have from Colchester. Finally, a curiosity. No, oh no, I, this, is, this is the bones inside the, uh, showing how well they, they survive in fact, despite not only having been in the ground for a long time, but having also been in the museum for over a hundred years. A curiosity, a painting by Alma Tadima showing Hadrian in a Romano-British potter's shop. <laughs> this was unfortunately the lightest image I could get of it, so it may be that the original painting needs a good clean. Um, but he has the Colchester vase prominently displayed by his elbow. Thank you.